Hello and welcome to Bobbin Talk. In this video, I will show you how I created this bag by working with an all over print applied to the body of the bag, how I imported and worked with lace to add to the ruffle of this bag. And I also created a background with an image, a photo that I took in Puerto Rico last summer. And I created this really dreamy setup for my bag. To create the patterns and the basic bag, please take a look at part one of this video series. Series. This will already work with the completed patterns, just adding the textures, the prints, and the background. So for this new iteration of the bag, I would like to create maybe some overall print, maybe a tie dye on the body, and I'd like to apply some lace on the ruffle, but I would need to change the fabric first because this is a full grain leather for the body and lambskin for the ruffle around here. So obviously if I would like to create some kind of a lace effect and then maybe a softer fabric so it drapes better. I would like to start maybe with a softer fabric, so let's go to the library and go to fabric and see if there's something that is more maybe of a summer bag. I'll look for cotton canvas. This canvas looks good. I'm going to left double click so it appears in my object browser. And for the ruffle, I'll pick something even softer. So I'll pick this lightweight cotton fabric. That's the cotton voile. I'll left double click. That looks really good. I would like to keep my handles in leather and then the body will become this canvas and then the ruffle will become this really light cotton fabric. The first thing I'd like to do is I'd actually like to separate the handles from the body. I'd like them to be two different fabrics. So I'm going to leave the handles for now to be in the leather. If you're not sure what they are, I'm going to just zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to highlight the two pattern pieces and take a look and see what they are. I can see here in blue that they're the grain leather. Now for the body, I'm going to hold shift, left double click on these two, and I will assign the canvas. So come here to the object browser, left click and assign that fabric. And that's good for now. And also for the ruffle, that would be these two bottom pieces. Hold the shift, left click on both of them. For these two, I will assign the lightest cotton fabric. So now that I have my fabrics assigned, I also see that I forgot to do this middle piece here. That's my gusset. I'm going to left click on that and I will also assign the cotton canvas for that. If you wanted this to be a different different fabric or a different print, you may want to create another swatch here. So you could left click and then copy that swatch and assign that to either pattern piece that you would like to. And you can assign a different color, different fabric, different print, anything that you want. I am now ready to apply my tie dye print. So for that, I will come to the library and open up the folder wherever your print is. I recommend that you have a really nice high quality print of your choice. I'm going to choose tie dye and I have a variety of swatches here. They're TIFF files, so I can't really see a preview. Left click and drag it directly onto the pattern piece where I want in the 3D window. And you can see that it's asking if you want it to be texture, normal map, or roughness map, I'm going to keep it as texture for now. You can inspect and see how you like it. You'll see that it appears on both pattern pieces that have designated that particular pattern piece, which is here, cotton canvas. You can see it appears here on the swatch too. If you want to create any changes to this, you can scale it, you can rotate it. All you need to do is come to edit texture, left click on that tool, and you'll get the tool. So I left click on the fabric. Let me close this window for a bit so you can see better. And here I will go just to the 3D window. I have this tool here now which helps me create the scale that I would like. I can also rotate the print any way I like and I can also scale it in a particular direction. So that would be horizontal or vertical and I can adjust it however I like. I can also left click and grab within the pattern itself and also adjust the print location or positioning wherever I like. When I'm happy, just let it go and move on to the next. I would like to also add some lace here to my ruffle. So I'll go back to my folder and look for the particular swatch that you would like to use. That would be one of these swatches. These I do have a preview so I can judge better what I would like to use. So maybe this one or this one. So I'm going to choose this one and apply it directly onto the pattern piece that I would like. And you can see that the scale is really large. I can adjust that again. I'm going to left click here and I'm also 
going to come to my gizmo and then adjust the scale of my print and make sure that I am happy. Also notice that I do have two different pattern pieces here so it's overlapping with the one behind. It's a little more difficult to see. Play around with whatever print you have until you're happy with your choice and once you're happy we have a couple of other things we can do. So let's come to the object browser property editor and play around with the colors and select the fabric that we would like. That I have the grain leather here is for the handles and obviously I would need to change the colors so that this works much better. So let's come to property editor select the fabric you want to play with so I'm going to come to canvas that is my body. I'm going to scroll down here and I can see that the imported tie dye came in as a texture that's what I chose and right now I have no color for the fabric because the original fabric was white. Left click on the swatch and choose the color that I would like to apply this as. If I want to stay in the pastel colorways I could choose something that is very light and obviously this print was in black and white grayscale so it is overlaying on top of it. Maybe something a little bit darker. This will become the background for that particular print. I'm going to stay in the very muted color so I'm going to make this a lavender color and then for the lace I also want to change that. You can see here that the original lace swatch is red. In order to change that color I would have to come here click on for desaturation. You can see that the lace swatch is now white and now I can come in here and change the color for the lace. Once I'm happy with my choice click OK and then for this bag now the blue handles don't work anymore so I'm just going to come here and also change that color make those black and you can see that for these particular handles I have two different sides to the leather. One side they're black the other side they're still blue so I would have to come here to the property editor for the front I chose black you can clearly see the swatch here let's also go to the back side of the handles and select a different color so for here I will choose that light lavender color and that will work better with the print that I have right now here is my bag a lavender bag with a tie-dye effect in canvas body and a black lace trim I'm very happy with this choice I'm happy with the scale I'm happy happy with everything that is here. If you don't want the handles to be black on the outside you can come back here and change the front to be lavender, the black to be on the back side or however you would like that to be. The only other thing that I see here is my stitching so I'll come to the stitching that is still blue. I want to make sure that that is also in a color that matches my choices better. This red stitch I will change to lavender. Let's scroll down here right now it's cheeky pink. I will switch that to a lavender color. If you don't want to see it that can become also black that becomes less prominent for the other two colors. I will also switch for the blue triple stitch here. I would like to be a bit more muted so I'll stick with the purple lavender and also for the zigzag stitch here chose a slightly darker purple. I can do black. I can go back to the lavender that I have. I actually like a bit of a contrast here to create a more interesting design detail. So I'm going to keep it like that and again if you're not happy with the handles and would like to choose a different color. I will come back to my handles. Let's do one more switch here. Currently I have the back with the mystic violet, the front with black. I would like the front to be mystic violet. See how I like that. I actually like the black better so I'm going to switch it back to black. I think that's more interesting. And I'm going to click simulate one more time and let the bag hang and I have a completely different design. I'm very happy with this choice. I like how it's hanging. I like the lightness of the ruffle much better and the only thing that I may want to do is if I'd like to gather this ruffle a bit more I can come to the 2D window and create a slightly longer pattern piece for the ruffle. So this is my ruffle piece. I'm going to hold shift and just just extend it a little bit more. You can see that I have a much longer ruffle piece. I'm going to simulate that and now this will become a much more gathered ruffle piece. So I'm going to actually go back because it escaped and what I'll do is I'll just add a couple of pins here so it doesn't run away from me. I'm going to hold W and just put a couple of pins and with the pins on I can also move a little bit more inside and then simulate and you can see that now it's staying in place and it's going to simulate much better. Now also keep in mind that because 
I change the fabric into a softer fabric, now the bag is collapsing a bit more rather than with the stiff leather. Once I'm happy with the simulation, I can come here and remove all of the pins and just let it fall on the pole. And I am happy with this choice. The only other thing I can do here is create some kind of an interesting background and place this in a more desirable environment. And for the last step of this project, I would like to create some kind of an interesting background so this particular bag is not hanging in the middle of nowhere in empty space. So for that, I will create an additional pattern piece. But here in the object browser, I will select a new fabric and I actually want to have something stiffer. So I'll come to fabric, scroll all the way down to trim hardware, and I'm going to left double click to add that to my object browser. This has the properties of being much stiffer and thicker so I'll select that and then come to my rectangle tool left click once and make it whatever you would like that background to be I'll make it about 50 inches big then I will come in my 3d environment and evaluate what the position of this is and if the size is good enough for me so I'm going to place it right behind my bag and make sure that it is centered or placed wherever you would like it to be come to the select tool if you need to move that now we're ready to bring some kind of an image here on top of it as a print. For that, I will select my graphic 2D pattern tool, left click on that, and then go to the file wherever your background image is, select that image, and then bring it in. Left click on the pattern piece to place it, and then you can see what that looks like in relationship to your bag. You can change the size, scale, rotate this image as necessary, and then adjust however you would like. Like it. This bag looks pretty amazing here. It's just kind of hanging in the middle of this empty space. So I will grab this whole 3D avatar and I will just bring my whole bag higher. So this location for now looks good to me. Now I'd like to grab all of my pattern pieces all together without the background and then also change the position of the bag. Make sure that you've selected everything. I missed out on the lace pieces. So I'm going to select all of my pattern pieces. I'm going to move the whole bag exactly where I would like it to be. Once you're happy with that location, adjust wherever you would like it to be. Move the background, scale the background, choose the proper angle angle whatever you would like to see from your final look make sure that you're happy with the final scale with the positioning of your bag where and how it shows and then simulate one more time so that it falls nicely on top or it hangs a little bit better where you need it to be and once that is placed exactly where you would like it you're ready to take some snapshots of this create some kind of turntable or any kind of final shot for this the easiest would be if I come to 3d window actually snapshot and then choose where and how you would like to save it choose the image size do you need multi view do you need one of them what is the resolution of your image and once you're happy with that click save and here is our final image with the photograph and beautiful lavender bag with black lace and leather handles. I'm very happy with this final image and I hope you enjoyed this process too. Thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions and ideas for new videos. If you like this video, if you learned something new, please click the like button, subscribe to Bob and Talk. This will help the YouTube algorithm. I'll be able to do more videos and I'll see you next time with more knowledge for you.